Um, good morning, those of you who are joining. Um, we are going to wait a couple of minutes for the attendee roster to uh, build up. We're expecting in the region of 300 people to attend. Um, and it takes a couple of minutes for everyone to join. So uh, we, we're going to be starting um, in a little moment. Okay. That's okay. No, she's not. We can't hear you. All right. Um, ladies and gentlemen, good morning, good afternoon, um, good evening, wherever you are. Um, um, my name is Tom Jenkins. I'm the Chief Executive Officer of ETOA. Um, we're holding this uh, webinar on Japan, and I'm absolutely thrilled to be joined by such a distinguished group of panelists. We have um, Victor Lopez, who's, who's Vice President of Koroni, joining us from Japan. We have Hiroshi Sawabi, from, um, who's the Executive Director of JATA, the Japanese uh, Association, Association of Travel Agents in, in Japan. Uh, we also have Adam Lottinger, the um, Managing Director of Mickey Travel Europe, uh, based here in London. And we also have Maya Matsuoka, who we're having one or two technical difficulties with, um, also based in, in Japan from JATA. Um, what I want to do is talk a little bit about the Japanese market before we start. But before we start, um, I want to show you a quick commercial video uh, from our lead sponsor, which is the ETOA sponsor, um, which is uh, from uh, our promotional video for City Fair. So will you bear with me while we call this up? Right, what am I doing? Aaron, I'm having problems, hold on. Lost it. Welcome to City Fair 2020, Europe's B2B networking workshop destinations, organised by ETOA, the European Tourism Association, in partnership with European Cities Marketing. This year's City Fair will be more important than ever as we look forward to 2021 and beyond. The workshop will offer one of the first occasions to have open and productive conversations about client needs and their demands for new and adaptive travel product as we enter recovery. 2020 is an exceptional year and at ETOA we've been hard at work to respond to the changing circumstances, finding a solution to best serve the needs of the industry and our members. A live in-person event would not have been practical this summer. Instead, we will now deliver our tried and tested B2B networking workshop online. City Fair 2020 will provide over 5,000 high quality meetings between European tourism suppliers and those taking their product to market. A perfect opportunity to reconnect with existing contacts and meet new leads, discovering new ways to work together to ensure a successful and sustainable recovery. The registration and appointment matching system are not changing. As usual, we'll ask you to select and rank your counterparts based on your preferences. A perfect opportunity to reconnect with existing contacts and meet new leads, discovering new ways to work together to ensure a successful and sustainable recovery. The registration and appointment matching system are not changing. As usual, we'll ask you to select and rank your counterparts based on your preferences. We'll then use this data to create dedicated appointment schedules. Of the day of the event, rather than attending in person, all you will need to do is a perfect opportunity to reconnect with existing contacts. And right. Okay, right, that was um, a slightly truncated version of um, the um, the webinar, uh, sorry, the uh, of the video for, for, for City Fair. But I think you've got the information there. Anybody wanting to come to City Fair, please go to the E2A website and link in. Um, I, I really just want to say a couple of words before we start. Um, uh, why are we doing this webinar on Japan? I think Japan is a market of central importance uh, to Europe. 
Ever since 1964, uh, when restrictions were lifted on Japanese citizens, Japan has been one of the most important Asian origin markets for world tourism and has shaped tourism provision throughout the world. I don't think there's a single destination which has not been touched and affected by the Japanese demand. For Europe, Japan, Japan has been a coveted market for over 50 years. It sent around 2 million arrivals every year since 2010, and each traveler has visited roughly three countries each. So it has, it's a truly pan-European market for, 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 for visitors. What's interesting, particularly interesting about Japan, is that they're consistently amongst the highest spending visitors coming to Europe and display a unique sophistication and enthusiasm for European culture amongst the non-European diaspora. They are the most welcome visitors. They consistently score highest and the best possible visitors to attract for a destination. Currently though, like the rest of the world, demand for Europe, demand for travel in China, Japan is currently stalled. Um, this crisis is an unparalleled depth and intensity. And I don't think anybody in the travel industry has ever experienced anything quite like this in our lives. I think it's most important at the moment to turn to Japan to see what the situation is like there and to see what the prognosis for recovery will be. Because however terrible it looks at the moment, be aware that recovery will always occur and what the nature of that recovery is and how it will affect us is the topic of discuss discussion today. I'm particularly pleased that we've been joined by uh, Sawabi-san and Matsuoka-san from uh, the Japan Association of Travel Agents. And Sawabi-san is going to be leading us through a brief PowerPoint presentation, which I will uh, try and embark on now. Uh, Sawabi-san, allow me to try and pull up the PowerPoint presentation for you. Thank you, Tom. Good evening and good morning, everyone, my colleagues. Uh, my name is Hiroshi Sawabe, representing the Japan Association of Travel Agents, which is JADA in short. I'm delighted to have the opportunity to talk with you today regarding the impact of COVID-19 and recovery measure in Japan. Also, do allow me to introduce Ms. Maya Matsuoka, one of my team members of Office of International Tourism at JADA. And Tom, could you could you place an index page? Second page. Oh, cool. All right. Sorry. Go back. Go back. Go back. That's it. Oh yeah, this one. And today, as shown on the slide, we'd like to make our presentation highlighting uh, these five topics. And I will cover first three one, and Maya will cover uh, fourth and fifth, which is very important for us. And COVID-19 has had a huge impact on the travel and hospitality industry. UNWTO's research has shown 100% of all global destinations have introduced full or partial travel restriction. It is very unfortunate, but this is unprecedented situation. Today, through our presentation, Maya and I, I hope that you will better understand the current difficult situation of the Japanese overseas travel market and recovery measures and activities which JADA has been conducting. Next page, please. The state of emergency in Japan. I'd like to start my presentation from information on the state of emergency. On April 16th, the Japanese government announced the nationwide state of emergency. Its period was from April 16th to May 6th. On May 4th, the government announced its extension until the end of May, which is not a good news for us. However, on May 14th, the government decided to lift the state of emergency for 39 out of 47 prefectures in Japan. The remaining eight prefectures, including Tokyo and Osaka, remain in state of emergency until the end of May. Today, I have a good news. 
Japan time this afternoon, the government is scheduled to announce the lift of state of emergency for Osaka and the Kansai area, though Tokyo metropolitan area and Hokkaido northern part of Japan remain in state of emergency until the end of May. But we can see the great progress and substantial progress to protect and control the COVID-19 spread during the last two weeks, which is great news for us. Next slide, please. JADA has been conducting many activities in order to share the updated information on the unprecedented situation caused by COVID-19 with the JADA member companies and to mitigate their negative impact by a coronavirus. Today, I'd like to introduce you the following four major actions which JADA has taken during the last four months. Proposal aimed at mitigating the impact of corona to the Japanese government and consultation for travel agent regarding unexpected business transactions. Now, online seminars, which is very important and very uh, powerful, orientation about the status quo and the relief and assistance measures planned by the government, and international destination seminars, which is very popular, <laughs> and guidelines for safe and seamless travel at the time of the recovery. Next slide, please. The drastic decline of tourism business was beginning early March as a result of the imposed by the government voluntary ban on the gatherings and other social activities. The financial loss due to decline was reaching the level which you have never experienced before. Using this slide, I'd like to explain about JADA proposal to the government of Japan on March 18th. Proposed measures were composed of the following five items. Guarantee long-term support for the travel companies. Devise a strategy of minimizing the risk of corona virus. Do not cancel but postpone school trips. Devise and run a large-scale demand stimulus campaign. And also Japan should propose global measures, protocols for safe and seamless travel at the time of recovery. The most important priority is to ensure the survival of the tourism sectors. And the tourism sector should be in good shape when the time comes to travel again. Next slide, please. This is the two bar graph of the number of Japanese outbound travelers comparing 2019 last year and 2020. I've shown on the red circle. Please take a look at the month of March, April in 2020. The number of Japanese overseas travelers in April was nothing but 3,915 compared to 1.6 million travelers last year, April. It seems that the month of May will record a lower number than that of April this year. Next slide, please. I've shown on the slide, the most popular destination, overseas destination in Japan are the neighboring countries such as Korea, China. However, please note that Europe is always ranked within top three not only Japanese travelers, but also Japanese travel agent. Europe is very important and one of the most favorite destinations in the travel market. Regardless optimistic or pessimistic for the recovery speed, it is about time for us to start preparation to draw the recovery process map for our tour production sales of tours to European destinations. We understand the speed of recovery depends on many factors. These include how quickly travel restrictions are lifted. Also, we have to remember that travelers' confidence is another important factor for speedy recovery. 
if people feel safe, they will start to travel again. Therefore, we have to pay attention how we can rebuild travelers' confidence on the process of recovery of travel. Tourism has always demonstrated its resilience. I believe, my and I believe this will continue to the case. Next four slides are very important today, and especially the topical timeline. I'd like to invite Maya to explain those four slides. Maya, floor is yours. Oh. Maya, I'm afraid your, your uh, audio is not working. Uh, so, Abi san is it, is it possible for you to talk us through the four slides if my okay. Yeah. Okay, then please go ahead and the next slide. Sorry. Okay, yes. And next slide shows the Japanese travel market situation in May 2020. An initial action towards a gradual recovery by creating guidelines for safe and seamless travel, which is this action is very important. The government had devised a plan and allocated budget for the recovery of travel. And domestic travel campaign demands stimuli measures. And domestic travel is expected to gradually begin to recover in July. Then after that, we can expect international travel. The inbound travel expected to start its recovery with the demand from nearby markets picking up first and Japanese overseas travel expected to begin to recover in the fall of 2020, launching bilateral destination campaigns. The tour products will depend on the border openings for the overseas destinations, the state of infections, safety measures, and most importantly, recovery of ample international air seat supply. Next slide, please. And today's highlight, the timeline and recovery steps. And summer 2020, step one, we resume the travel business, the travel, domestic travel, launch a nationwide domestic travel campaign supported by the government tourism stimulus measures. Government prepared a lot of funds to support these measures. Then we move to step two, fall 2020, inbound or outbound travel, but starting from FIT and small groups, resume international travel between nearby countries with bilateral standard protocols for safe travel. And then we move to the early 2021, step three, all travel, domestic, inbound and outbound travel, travel by the global standard and protocols for safe travel, and launch nationwide overseas travel campaign. Next, page, uh, next slide, please. And this timeline that recovery steps of the uh, tra uh, travel products. Step one is business travelers and high-end FIT. Then we move to step two, regular, expand, and small group tours and package tours. And then we move to the step three, group tours and incentive tours. Next slide, please. And this timeline is a recovery step for joint efforts. As I stated before, the step one is the B2B online destination seminars. This is well received in the Japanese travel market. And step two, this will be the turning point for us in the Japan market, Tourism Expo 2020. We are scheduled to hold business meetings and exhibition from September 10 to 12 in Tokyo. And another event under the name of the Tourism Expo 2020, International Trade and Fair will be scheduled to be held on October 29 and November 1 in Okinawa. 
And step three, B2C online destination campaigns. And as I stated before, we believed our strength and resilience that we did in the past very difficult times at the time of 3-11 or 9-11 or March uh, or SARS, we came back. We, the uh, travel industry, came back very strongly. Tom, thank you. Well, thank you very much, Sawabi san. I think we're back on the uh, in the webinar now. Um, thank you very much, Sawabi san. Uh, Maya, uh, Matsuaka san, I'm really sorry you weren't able to contribute. Yes, me too. Can you oh, hear me now? I'm sorry, it's just I, I have no idea what happened. No, yes, this happened. No, no. Um, it, we have anyway, yes, the discussion is still. Comments? Yes. Maya. Uh, from me? Oh, yes. Uh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> no comments. Uh, yes, here. I just wanted to add, you know, that uh, of course we are heading to towards recovery, but at the same time you have to think about, um, um, as you mentioned, you know, it's about the contents of the tours, but not only the contents, of course, it's very important to have them and to have uh, people willing to, to, to venture out of their countries, but at the same time the, the confidence, you mentioned, you know, the customer um, the confidence of the customers is very important and we will have to, as an industry, we will have to think about the group size, you know, when we, it comes down to uh, group tours. Also, we have to think about uh, solutions which will make people uh, feeling uh, secure when they are out and about. So uh, this is still up to us, you know, to, of course, we have been devising guidelines and uh, we still need to think what will make uh, our customers feel safe. The point is, though, that uh, it's not very easy to do it. From now on, we will have to be very vigilant and also listen to what people want to say and what they have to say when they think about traveling overseas. So it's not just something which we can do at the moment. This will be a process. I mean, uh, a process which the industry will have to really follow very, very carefully. Yes. Well, thank, uh, thank you for the you moment, yes. And it's very good, very good to hear your voice. Um, uh, can I just turn to <laughs> thank you? you. Um, yes. Uh, it's um, uh, you um, are vice president of um, Kuoni GTS uh, Tum, uh, JTB Tumlare, uh, one of the largest players in the market. Um, I'm just wondering how how the current crisis is affecting you and how how you're responding to it. Uh, thank you. Uh, well, first of all, I'm in charge of Kony, Kony GTS, yes, oh, right. specifically, yes. Uh, yes, I mean, our situation is reflected in the, the presentation we got today from Mr. Sabe San. I mean, uh, since March, uh, business has been down, and I think, like all operators and all agents in Japan, so business is down. We had our offices uh, basically closed or staff working from home like everybody in the industry but we are at the same time preparing for the recovery uh, of course in different aspects we are do working on product development we are working on uh, educational webinars and we are of course and this is very important we are now collecting information about the local conditions of safety and restriction and this is i think the basic point because this is what the market needs to know. Uh, clients are calling us. They want to know what is going on in Europe. Uh, what are the, the restrictions? What are the regulations? What are the new reg regulations? And uh, we are trying to get all this information uh, from our offices, from the authorities. And this is where we are now putting the effort at the moment. Because without these conditions clear, we cannot basically make products. So this is what the, the main condition now to restart is to have these conditions cleared. And then, of course, two aspects, uh, the airlines and the access to Europe in the case of Europe. I mean, uh, the authorities uh, have not yet opened most of Europe uh, to Japan at the moment. So these are the two conditions to start really to, to uh, create products. Because at the moment, the clients we have we have quotations for, for winter, of course we have them, but 
uh, those quotations need to be reviewed because the conditions are not clear yet. This is a really the aspect, very important now. That's a very good point. I, I think I, I ought to mention that Soavi san is going to have to leave us in a few minutes. If anybody has got any questions directly for um, Soavi san uh, about the JATA presentation we saw, please submit them on the um, questionnaire uh, button that you've got on your webinar um, page there. It should, it should be fairly clear. Uh, we're already getting a couple of questions coming in, but we'll wait for a few more before we address them. Adam, um, uh, very, very good of you to join us. Uh, we have My everyone here throughout the globe. I, I assume you're tucked away in North London uh, quite happily. Uh, the, um, well, what is the situation for Mickey at the moment? You're one of the largest um, wholesalers dealing in this market. To be honest, it's very similar, obviously, to, to what Victor has already outlined. Um, our, our business from April uh, has diminished to almost zero. Um, of course, it's not just the Japanese market, but also the other Asian markets have reduced uh, to the same degree. So we're, there's virtually nothing on the books for, for April, May, June. Um, we are starting to see uh, an increase in the future bookings, particularly for obviously for the FIT segment. Um, and of course, for the last few weeks, we've been mostly dealing with uh, the fallout from cancellations earlier on in the year. So naturally, we've tried to secure refunds for our clients as much as possible. Um, going forwards, uh, as Victor said, uh, we're also doing a lot of webinars. There's, there's still a huge appetite and interest, I think, in the market. And um, I think people uh, want to feel in contact uh, with Europe. They want to be finding out more about Europe. Uh, we're obviously trying to feed that demand and, and nurture that. So we're trying to keep uh, Europe in the forefront of the Japanese consumer mind. Um, at the same time, of course, we're also trying to keep uh, good communication with our suppliers, which is which is also important. And uh, we do believe that there could be a fundamental change in the Japanese market in that uh, I think FIT will, will continue and small groups will continue to, uh, to build and uh, therefore we're developing more products to support the FIT segment. Right, indeed. Um, I, I think, um, uh, so Avi Sam, we have a question uh, for you that I, I would reiterate, I don't think I've ever seen um, a more staggering slide than the one you shared with us about the outbound flow of Japanese visitors leaving Japan. Um, it is a stark reminder to all of us quite what the situation is. I mean, we are very well aware experiencing what's happening, but that was a really graphic illustration of the scale of the collapse. Um, I understand that the, um, the the question really is, is that um, the, sorry, I the, the questions are rolling in very quickly. Um, the government, the Japanese government at the moment has got a security advice level three at the moment, and um, they're really wondering when they might start dropping it to level two and level one. It might be quite useful if you could explain what level three is, uh, and if you have any idea when they might drop it to level two or level one, it would be very good. But I think maybe describe what level three is, if you could. Sorry, Eric, I beg your, I beg your pardon, you're on mute. You need to start speaking again. Oh, can you hear me? Yes, we can. My suggestion is uh, those standard uh, is decided and check and decided by the um, Ministry of Foreign Affairs in Japan, but they collect all international travel information from each country's, uh, say, uh, Japan embassy in each country. So my suggestion to the local tour operators or hotels, for example, in the UK and in France and Italy, and don't hesitate to provide up-to-date travel information to uh, Japan Embassy. I uh, get them ready. And, and 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 be updated with the uh, most important information uh, uh, with them. And it's very hard to say, you know, I don't want to say the Japanese government is very conservative. But I'd like to say, as I mentioned before, at the slide presentation is, we have to take good care of the Japanese traveler's confidence. So uh, information of safe and seamless travel 
is very important for us. That support the uh, speed up the uh, recovery of the uh, Japanese travel to uh, foreign countries. Excellent. Well, thank you very much. Tom, yeah. Tom just to, if I may, I mean, the level three is the, the government does urge people not to travel uh, if they can possibly avoid it to all these European destinations. So just to be clear on that point. And, and um, it's really up to us to try and furnish the, the, the embassies and every uh, aspect of Japanese government to assure them that we are doing everything we can to mitigate the dangers. And yeah. thus, we might move it from down to three to two to one, which is where we need to be, I imagine. But That's currently, I think, sorry I, to interrupt. Currently, I think all the world is in, is in level three from yeah. the uh, Japanese government perspective. Yeah. So there is no destination level two, I think. Maya, please. Hold it. We lost her again. Can you hear me now? Yeah, we yeah. can hear you. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Uh, basically, what uh, we have heard, you know, as a trend recently is that um, uh, at present, of course, the Ministry of Foreign Affairs uh, advises, you know, the travel advisory is at, at level three, but uh, we expect that uh, gradually there will be bilateral. Um, let's say agreements between Japan and probably first between Japan and the neighboring countries. And then we expect also, you know, uh, these agreements to continue with other destinations or other countries as well. So the first steps, we cannot actually say when they will be. It will depend, of course, on the, you know, the spread of uh, the virus and the situation uh, in every country. But uh, the first steps will be obviously, you know, bilateral agreements to easing the restrictions and to uh, lowering the level of uh, the travel advisory by the Japanese government. And they, they will be actually mutual agreements. So it's, uh, of course, a lot of work and it will take some time, but uh, that's uh, probably going to be the first way, the, the first steps between, you know, um, oh, the first steps to ease the restrictions. I, I, but the, the, the interesting, sorry, I, I'm going to jump around a little bit because Suavi made a number of yes. interesting points in his um, in his presentation. Um, and it may have been in your part of the presentation as well, but I'm particularly intrigued that um, uh, you're very confident that Tourism Expo Japan is going to be going ahead in September in yes. Tokyo. Um, there is a uh, huge question mark over, over such events in Europe at the moment. And it's it's great to hear that that's happening. You think it is it will happen? It will happen, and this year it's not in September. It is in the end of October, so we have one month more, you know, in uh, the fight with the virus. So um, yes, we're confident that uh, given that there are no other really huge outbreaks, we will be uh, going ahead with uh, the expo. Excellent. Okay, well, that, that, that's heartening, heartening news in an otherwise unheartening uh, area. I'm going to now launch a poll, if I may. Um, we're going to be polling the people uh, who are um, um, uh, who, who are attending this webinar, and we just want to. We're going to be asking you a question, which is thinking about the industry across your market. What do you think will be the biggest challenge after the crisis? Um, economic resources, effectively, are you going to still be in business? Uh, cancellations and refunds or retaining talent. Um, it's quite important. I'd be very grateful if you could reply and I'm just launching it now and the poll is going to be running. Um, now, it, just in general, is there much optimism in the market? I, I know that the, um, I mean, really just for travel in general, not, not, not necessarily for international travel. I know the Japanese government is, is launching a, um, major initiative to boost uh, domestic tourism in Japan. Um, is that having, is that sort of kick-starting uh, uh, ideas of travel in people's minds? Um, do you have an angle on this, uh, Sawabi san or Maya? Yes, yes, Sawabi san Yes, go ahead, go ahead. Yes, okay. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, uh, basically we have this experience, you know, with kickstarting um, recovery com campaigns because uh, after the 
well, first it was, you know, after the terrorist attacks um, in 2001, and then it was uh, the um, uh, Great uh, Northeast Japan earthquake, and uh, now we've have, we've got this, you know, crisis. And um, we have this experience in Japan. So Abesan has led a lot of, well, at least several of, of uh, several of these campaigns. And um, it's this time it's much bigger. So the government is set out to, uh, well, to kickstart, you know, the recovery. The government has also uh, allocated the budget first for the recovery of the domestic travel, but it will be followed once the domestic travel is. Um, um, up and running, we are confident that um, uh, overseas travel will be uh, will start recovering too. And uh, well, we think that uh, uh, well, the, your uh, poll about the three challenges after the crisis uh, are we supposed to answer this one too? Or no, I have to. I mean, you can if you, you're you're most welcome to pitch in. We could actually. I what I'll do is um, <laughs> if you can wait you. one second. Um, I'm going to more or less close this poll yes. because um, over 50% um, of the uh, hundreds of people who are watching have pitched in and the, and the numbers aren't moving very much anymore. Um, so uh, what I just give you the answer is that um, roughly 78%, 79% are saying that yes. um, economic resources and access to financial instruments are what matters most. And a close tie, really, uh, in second, is the issues with cancellations and refunds and retaining talent. Um, that's the answer for the poll. Thank you very much for those of you who voted. Um, I'd be actually interested. I mean, um, uh, Maya, you wanted to say something. Please say something if you, if you wish to. Uh, yes, it's it's very interesting to see, you know, how the company is actually pitching with this uh, poll. Um, I would say that yes, probably you know retaining talent in Japan and for the Japanese companies will be the least problem because the government actually uh, provided support for the companies, so the companies have not fired uh, or they haven't laid off um, any employees at the moment. So everybody and everything is on hold. But uh, uh, as soon as uh, the market starts moving, everybody everybody will be back and uh, working. So, um, yes, economic results, uh, they will be really a challenge because, uh, well, the companies, travel agencies, uh, tour operators, they make no profits at the moment. They have nothing, you know, coming in. And, uh, well, the cancellation policies, they will be very important, but I think that uh, Victor and Adam already talked about this as well. Okay. Yes. I'm sorry, um, uh, Victor, is, uh, is there any angle on that? I think... Sorry, irrelevant what I think. I'd be more interested to hear what you think, actually. But so, uh, do you think that um, liquidity, effectively, is the most important issue facing the industry? Yes, I mean it's an issue for us. I mean not only for Japan. I mean for all markets. Also, the situation of our clients is very important. So, of course, there are a lot of worries about it uh, worldwide. And also, of course, we suffered from the cancellations, like like everybody. So, I I, I think the these two points are the main concern. Yes, so far. Uh, Adam, do you, do you have an angle on that? Yeah, I, I think I would agree. I think liquidity is obviously very important for both sides of the equation here. Um, obviously, agents now, they've got very limited funds. So uh, that's one of the reasons why we can't have great optimism for business until the autumn at the earliest, because obviously the agents only want to promote once they feel there's a good chance of, of take up from the public. So, um, so yeah, liquidity is very important how they invest into the future. But I do think also that the cancellation and refund, the flexibility of future bookings going forward is going to be very important. Uh, a lot of people have either lost money or they've got money tied up in previous cancellations. So I think it's very important to kickstart uh, in kickstarting the, the recovery that, uh, that there are there is great flexibility so that that will inspire and uh, encourage people to to book again I believe um, obviously other factors are the health situation uh, development of, of a vaccine and, and obviously the local protocols etc and of course the flight situation but I do think flexibility will be important going forwards I mean we're seeking into really what the things that uh, recovery is contingent on and you've you've touched on um, um, a, a number of them. I mean, assurances of safety. Um, I, to a certain extent, we need an assurance of welcome in destination. One of the problems that we've got is destinations effectively closing themselves to visitors. 
Uh, I'm more interested in if you think um, you're going to start needing to change your product. You've alluded to um, possibly smaller group sizes, and one of the questions that's uh, coming up um, through from the audience is, do you think that there's going to be more demand for smaller groups? Uh, but are, is there any other sort of modification to to the product line that you can see happening, or is going to be necessary? Uh, uh, Adam, can I ask you first, and I'll pass it on to Victor, and then I'll. Yeah, I, I think there was already a change starting to happen in the, in the Japanese market. Uh, I think the uh, the Japanese are quite intrepid travelers and explorers, but I think that the uh, we've probably already seen the peak of the of the mass group market. Uh, so I think that there will be a reduction in the uh, in the size of groups going forwards, and COVID nineteen is only going to speed that up. Um, so I, I think there will be a change there, but I think also um, I think uh, modern technology and the digital uh, ability to to uh, enhance people's when they, uh, experiences when they travel as individuals is is also going to very much support that uh, shift. So I don't think it's going to be overnight, but I think it's a, a shift that's already started, and I think the uh, the current pandemic will definitely uh, speed that up. So I think smaller groups, uh, high end, uh, niche and um you know um more fit um travel i think definitely will you know gradually increase uh, yeah and in, in this you're you're broadly agreeing with the with the charter observations in their slides that you know we're going to see um precisely those markets taking off before we see the larger groups kicking out um yeah. victor is this a thing you you agree with Yes, of course. I mean, this tendency was already there before the crisis. I mean, more and more smaller groups, the size has been going down in the past years. And of course, the FIT business has been growing. So I think this is consistent. And now with the new restrictions in Europe, of course, we expect the groups to be smaller, much smaller, uh, just because we may not have the uh, the full buses. I mean, the, the side of the coach will not be as, as it used to be before. And we know about the restrictions uh, from suppliers we are now. So this is expected. It's very much expected. Uh, now, regarding not only the size of the groups, but also the nature of the products, I think for the short term, products uh, like uh, nature products, more than cities, may be favorable, I think, for the near future. Uh, I don't want to mention specific destinations, but uh, mountain products, nature products, uh, out of Europe, I would mention maybe New Zealand, or this kind of destinations may be popular. Uh, I think for the short term, mm -hmm. well, the reasons as well, right? Well, uh, you're queuing me neatly to uh, pose the next polling question to our audience, which is um, thinking about uh, Japanese traveller sentiment in your product development. Which of the following do you agree with? Travellers will be looking for less crowded locations. Travellers travel recovery will be domestic or neighbouring destinations. Operators will offer new normal programs, whatever that means, and operators will offer new destinations and attractions. I'm going to launch this um, now, and please vote, those of you doing that. Um, I've got another technical, not a technical question, but an obviously central question here. Um, and and the, the, these guys are missing from the party today, but I wonder if any of you have got a perception on it. When do you think um, the airline lift is going to start building up to where it was um last year it's currently almost non i mean it's there but it, it, it's a skeleton service at the moment uh, do, does anybody know what the airlines are planning at the moment maya do you have any position on this uh well rather than a position there was an article in one of our uh newspapers industry newspapers this morning and uh, basically uh iata expects uh, the airlines to have the same capacity as last year in uh, 2024. So this is what uh, the experts say. Uh, we, of course, at this point of time, as uh, you know, a representative of the travel agencies, uh, we very much hope that uh, this timeline will be much shorter and we don't have to wait until 2024. But uh, this is what, uh, well, the airlines, you know, uh, or the people who watch the airlines expect. Okay, Victor, is this, do you have any yes. on this? Well, we already, well, we have information that some airlines are coming back. Uh, yes, we have some of them coming now, coming back now for June and July, but most of the airlines haven't announced yet 
uh, the program from July onwards. I heard about Finair precisely, they already announced the schedule from July onwards. Uh, Swiss is now increasing the frequencies, but it's still not enough to, to really build products uh, as such. So it's a bit too early, but I think the, comp the airlines will fix the summer schedules very, very soon in the coming days. Uh, mm -hmm. Yes, but I would say a very important point as well is we're talking about outbound, but it's all linked to the inbound because the airlines need both markets, right? Uh, just to give an example, not in Europe, but Taiwan, for instance, they announced that they will open the borders to tourism from October. So from October means opening the borders means both sides, uh, outbound and inbound to Japan. So mm -hmm. this will boost as well Japan inbound as well from October eventually and the airlines will schedule accordingly. So uh, we have to see this aspect. It's not only about outbound airlines, we'll also judge the, the inbound uh, possibilities as well into Japan. It's linked together. Yes. Um, Adam, did you have an angle on that? I think it's a little bit of a chicken and egg situation. I mean, I mean obviously at the moment, uh, the airlines see that there, is, there isn't demand and they don't see a demand in the immediate future. So it's understandable what they're doing. But I think once they feel that the sentiment is changing and there's confidence building, then I think that will naturally, uh, personally, I think that will naturally um, you know, encourage them to, to, to open up more quickly. Uh, I certainly hope it's not going to be 2024. Um, there was already indications of a shortage. There was already an indication of shortage of uh, seats, particularly in economy for groups uh, previously. Um, but you know, I think it's very difficult to read. But I think the airlines will take their cue to a large degree from uh, how how quickly these markets recovery uh, recover. They they want the business, and it will be in their interest to open up when they feel the time is right. Okay, I, I'm going to now close the poll, um, and the poll result, for what it's worth, is that 29% of the people taking part in this think the travellers will be looking for less crowded destinations. Uh, that comes in second place. 43% um, felt that travel recovery will be domestic and neighbouring countries first. And I, I think this is um, a reasonable um, assumption. 20% think that operators will offer new no normal programs, which means that uh, you'll be devising your, your program to fit their concerns about coronavirus. And 8% uh, think that operators will offer new destinations altogether. Um, you can make from that what you will. I think the, um, uh, I'm, I'm very intrigued by one thing, which is that um, we've already alluded, to, we've, we've got a, a unique problem in a slump at the moment, which is that normally spare capacity helps ignite demand because the supplier's urge to fill that spare capacity leads to some spectacularly low prices. Um, and I think particularly in 2001, uh, we had some amazing land air deals being offered globally for Europe and indeed other destinations just to get people flowing through the system again. Um, I suppose I've really got two questions. One, do you think people are going to open up for that? Because in 2001, we had, we had existed, you know, there, there was product there waiting to be sold. Um, and the situation we've got now is at the moment, the product isn't open. It's not there. Um, and will they only open it up to be sold when they know there is robust demand that will pay the right rate? And this is one of the one of the problems that we're looking at. And I, I need to have your opinion on that, I suppose, rather than give it from me. Um, and I, but I think if there is um, scope to offer spectacular, you've got to take this deal now, otherwise you will never get it again. Kind of deal being offered uh, by by European um, suppliers to Japan. Would there be a take up? Would you know? Would 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 Japan travel if the price is right? I suppose is the question. Victor, you're the salesperson here. What, what's your position on this? Well, I think you already partially rep replied to the question yourself because the situation is very different from 2001. Uh, supply is not there yet, uh, right? In most of our destinations. So in that aspect, the price will not necessarily come down just like this, and also with the new restriction, the size of the group is smaller. So th this will bring the, the price up probably because just because of the, the size of the groups. 
So I think the situation is very different from, from 2001. The price is always an important factor, but not as it was uh, 19 years ago, I think. It's more, uh, it's more about safety. It's more about uh, perception of safety. That's why uh, not so crowded places, for instance, nature places, products will sell maybe better. I think it's more that aspect. But of course, price is also a factor. As a sales, it's always a factor, but not as it was 19 years ago, I think. Adam? Yeah, I think it's almost a rhetorical question, to be honest, because uh, I think with all the social distancing measures on coaches, uh, airlines and, and, uh, and destinations and attractions, etc., I think it's going to be very difficult to offer the sorts of prices. But uh, with uh, taking that as an assumption that there are fantastic prices, I think uh, some markets uh, um, will very much react to that. And I think there will actually be a small segment potentially from Japan that will react to that. But uh, otherwise, I would echo really uh, what Victor said. I think that um, traditionally the Japanese are very concerned about, about safety. And uh, I think, uh, I think there, there are more important factors than, than price. Um, you know, I, I, so I think they will want to see that and feel that it's relatively safe. Um, having said that, the, the market, I think, has become a lot more robust, a lot more resilient than it used to be. And uh, I think in, in, in days of uh, gone by, uh, any uh, evidence of a problem or uh, um, terrorism and the Japanese uh, virtually stopped traveling. But that's changed quite dramatically. So I think they are much more resilient now. Um, so I think pricing as much as possible will certainly help and there will be a segment. There's always a segment in most countries that will respond to that. But I think uh, generally they'll want some reassurance of, uh, of safety. I'm gonna um, um, I'm gonna just change to another question that's cropping up here, and I, it's a very pertinent one. Um, do you think um, the demand is going to be swayed by the different performance of different European countries in dealing with the coronavirus? So, I mean, are, are people going to look at Italy, for example, or the UK, and go? Well, we're not quite so sure about Italy and the UK, but we're much more confident about Norway or Denmark or, or, or maybe Germany. Is, is there going to be a differentiation between countries in Europe in the market? Maya, you're smiling. That means you've got an answer. Well, you may not have an answer, but you're thinking of one. <laughs> we're all smiling, Tom. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> all smiling. Well, um... Well, I agree with everything um, which Adam said, that uh, the market here has become much more resilient than it used to be. And um, as, you, as you say, you know, different countries in Europe, they dealt with uh, the corona, uh, that's the COVID-19 spread in different ways. And this, at the moment, you know, it has a huge impact on the perception of those countries as destinations. But at the moment, there is no demand and there is no supply. So um, at this point of time, it is, well, almost unimportant or just, you know, it doesn't make any difference. The point is, you know, how these countries afterwards, once uh, uh, the restrictions are lifted, how they um, present their, themselves, you know, how they are dealing with uh, the post-pandemic situation, what they are doing uh, to actually pr provide to ensure the safety of the visitors. So this will be much more important than, uh, of course, the image will persist, you know, for some time. But if the destinations, their governments and their tourism authorities um, actually do, uh, they perform really good campaigns here in Japan to ensure the public that they will be, you know, the visitors will be safe there, then I think that the, the images will not persist for so long. So, but it all depends on how the problem is approached and, and how these destinations, destinations present themselves, you know, here to the Japanese public first. And that was really well put. Um, can I, um, I, I'm gonna launch the final question here and I'm gonna ask the audience and the panelists uh, exactly the same question. Um, it's the big question everyone's asking, which is thinking about the recovery, when do you expect the first significant wave of Japanese visitors to be arriving in Europe? Um, and it would be very interesting to hear what the audience thinks. So I'm going to launch that question now. It'd be very interesting to hear what the panel thinks. Um, 
I'll just start start at my top left hand side, which is um, Victor. Victor, when when do you think? Well, obviously not July, and uh, not August. <laughs> Probably end of September and then October, November, December. Yes, we. I hope we we'll see the first groups going to Europe, by especially by fall. Yes, I think uh, what we saw in the presentation from Jata, I think that's the perception we have here. But uh, it was also in the presentation of Jata today from, from uh, Mr. Sarabe. Uh, I think first it will be more in terms of bilateral countries. So I would say Japan to go into Taiwan, or in case of Europe, Japan going into Iceland. Or you know, uh, uh, the procedures are safe, so they will develop probably now in uh, September, October, November, December. So I would see uh, this kind of recovery. But the full packages, I mean, the the volume. Hopefully, if the virus situation improves all over Europe, I will see more into Q1 next year. So Adam? this would be. A, I I think it depends on your definition of significant. Uh, compared to what we've got at the moment, I think there will be significant recovery in, you know, in the autumn, but that's purely going to be compared to what we have now. I think in normal terms of significant, I think it will start from uh, more from uh, from winter, from November onwards, maybe a 10, 20% recovery. I think, I think the first sign of what I would call really significant in the sense of getting back to maybe 50, 60% of pre-pandemic levels maybe by next summer I think a full recovery will take probably till 2022 but um, I, I think next year next we'll start to see it from uh, autumn onwards but getting real traction during the winter and I think then particularly that's when there might be some uh, attractive prices around as well. Uh, Maya have you got an opinion? Um, uh, yes I believe that uh, well it depends on well, how big the wave, a wave you expect, you know, to have there. But first we need, uh, of course, you know, the lifting of the restrictions. So um, we don't know when this will happen, hopefully very soon. And um, of course, uh, it is also, um, if, if, you know, it happens uh, by the end of the summer, we can expect the first FIT visitors or small groups to Europe, uh, some European destinations uh, in late November, I think, probably you know, around Christmas and New Year, because these are big events and, uh, well, the travelers basically, you know, they love, uh, uh, they, they used to love these packages, I guess that, uh, the, you know, the trend will continue. And, um, but uh, that will be the beginning. And then uh, we'll see probably more people in uh, the summer of uh, 2021, um, but still not really a full recovery. And so probably, you know, the 2020 will be 2022, sorry, will be the year when we can talk about, uh, well, some real return of the Japanese to the European destinations. I don't think um, yes. your opinions differ that much from the other principal mar origin markets from Europe. Um, the poll, for what it's worth, um, gives us 31% think that um, we'll see a real recovery and what we mean by significant is an open question, as Adam has pointed out. 31% um, fourth quarter of 2020, 69% 2021. Um, I would stress that that means that 2021, there is everything to play for. And um, those of you wanting to sell your destination or buy your destination, I, uh, buy product uh, to sell in origin markets, I can only draw your attention as we did at the beginning to City Fair, which is taking place in July online. Um, everyone is most welcome to attend. We have a record number of Japanese operators showing an interest. So um, uh, please uh, at least go and click on uh, the links and have a look at what we're offering on that level. It's up to me really just to thank Victor Lopez, Adam Lotica, and Maya Matsuoka. And can you please thank uh, um, Yusaba san to just sorry, yes. to Wabi San to uh, for for uh, joining us today. It was a great honour for him to come along, and uh, thank you, thank audience, you. for listening. And uh, this is available on our website, um, uh, really from tomorrow. Probably we will have it up there. Thank you, everybody, and thank you, panelists. Good luck. Goodbye. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you. Thank you. Goodbye. Bye.